Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and today I want to talk about the CDS Entities Option Set field. Um, so I was building this app, and I ran into this very interesting situation. Um, it seemed so simple when I was building it, but then when I did run into it, um, I had to come up with this workaround. Um, again, it's, it's, it's the way it's intended, um, but it's not obvious, and that's why I went ahead and created this video with this scenario over here. Um, so the scenario is pretty simple. It's just a simple app that I created. Uh, where a ticket can be entered um, and the backend database is uh, being saved on a CDS entity. So let me show you that CDS entity. Um, I went ahead and created um, a simple entity, it's called tickets. And in the entity, I'm using very simple fields over here. The description one, which is a multi-line text, full name, text, um, status, and then subject. Um, it's the status one, which is the option set field. Um, that's where I kind of noticed something. Um, when I created it, nothing fancy. I went ahead and created, added the field. I selected it as an option set field. And in the option set field, I added the options. Um, I put it in as a new, in progress, pending, and complete. Um, and um, so let me now show you the app. And in the app, I built it as a mobile app. Uh, when you start using it, you basically come in, put in a new entry from the user function. It autom automatically pop populates my name. And I'll say that the... Um, um, uh, screen has a crack. So either replace the screen or the entire laptop. And it goes in and gets submitted and it'll take me back to the original screen. So since it's, um, right now it's in progress over here, um, but that's, that's the easy part. Um, let me show you what, what when I went ahead and submitted it, um, the, the ticket, it's got a patch function. And then just to make sure that everything is there, I go into the entity, go to data. Let's make sure I see all fields. And now you will even see um, the new field that I entered over here. And one thing I want to point out is now in the status, it went ahead and automatically became in progress. So let's, let me show you how this was done um, and let me also let me show you what was the issue i ran into and uh, how i was able to work around it um, so let me go back to the app and in the add screen in the submit button i went ahead and put in the patch command now the patch command was pretty simple um, i went ahead and got all the uh, field names directly from the um, the cds entity over here and then i was using the patch function um, but initially in the patch function over here, when I was adding the status, the status one I just put in was the options over there. So the way I wanted to put in the ticket was I wanted it to automatically go into in progress. Um, and so when I would go back to my CDS entity over here, I would look at my entity and I'd see in the status, I say, yep, that's the option set has in progress. I basically just go ahead and put in that, you know, just to make sure I didn't even make any spelling mistakes. I just copied that as it is, uh, and in here, that's basically what I put in. Just double quotes, in progress. But when I first did that, you know, I kind of gave it a second just to make sure that the app wasn't, you know, working anything or there wasn't any problems. But it said that the type of this argument for that uh, entity uh, field does not match the expected um, type number. And that's kind of threw me off a little bit because I and it was it was the um, it was an option set and those were all text values I put in over there, but then it hit me that you know what it's possible that this could be an option set over here and it's actually recording each of those as a numerical value where one equals the first option two equals the second option so I, I kind of got that. Um, so what I did try to do also is I went ahead and put in a value, and the value part you know take that off and put it over here. It took off the squiggly line so I thought that would work. But when I go ahead and try to enter it, it will still not work. In fact, let me try it right here. You know, do a test, test, submit. And it goes ahead and populates in over here. But as you can see, the status one isn't getting put in over here. So what, what was going on, and, and just to be on the safe side, or you know, just to make, make sure that I'm showing you guys everything, I come in over here, um, let's go ahead and check back on the all fields. You can see that the entry has been put in over here, but that status field didn't get added in. Um, so upon doing some research, I found out that when you're using the option set field, it's not that you need to use the text value, but you've got to use, uh, not that no, you don't have to use the text option, but you, you need to use the numerical value. Well, 
that's great. But where do I get that numerical value? So again, I would have to now go back into my entity over here. Let me go to my entity, go to my tickets, go to the status uh, field, which is the option set, put that over there, look at the ones I want to add. And then remember in my patch function, I wanted to set the status automatically to in progress. So in progress over here, you see those three dots um, or the ellipses. When you click on that, you see something called view more. You click on that view more, and that's where you get the value. But again, there's a little bit more to this. It doesn't just stop over here. Two things you got to do. First of all, you want to get the value. So let me just make sure that I put it in a notepad. And the value over here is 572, comma 090, comma 001. So I got the value for in progress. And now when I go into my patch function over here, um, let me go back to my add screen. That's where the patch function is on the submit. Um, I'll clean up the whatever change I made before is I'm going to now just add that numerical value, which is right here. When I first put that in over here, it's not going to like that. It's actually going to give me the same thing saying that this is again a text. So what I did was I went ahead and took off those commas. Oh, took the comma off. And again, it says it's a text. So I took off the double quotes. And again, the errors all went away, the squiggly lines went away, and it will work. But here's here's something I want you to point out, though, is it is pretty much, um, you know, just normal that you start in, when you're making a patch function, you know, you start out these brackets over here, and you pretty much use that same bracket, the beginning and the end, all the way till all the fields have been added. And let me show you that scenario. Like over here, let's just assume that I take this off and that off. And now, again, I'm not getting any errors. It's still working. I'm seeing over here, that's the beginning bracket. That's the, you know, the end bracket for that patch function. And this is very normal. I've built a whole bunch of apps. In fact, I've even demoed some patch uh, videos over here doing this. And again, I'm not seeing any errors over here, so it should work. Now, when I go ahead and you know try that, let's do it right here. Um, test number two, testing again to see if it works. Hit submit. Looks like it's doing something. It went ahead and did that, and actually went ahead and took that in progress as well. But just in case, if it doesn't, um, what I want to show you is the workaround. The workaround is you take that over here, uh, wrong one, click on it, and you want to go ahead and make sure that this guy has its own double brackets. And to do that is you close the double bracket over here. So just to make sure you see it, let's make that as one. You close this guy's double brackets. So this becomes one section. Now you'll start seeing that squiggly line. You make sure that he has it here. And now again, it's just completed. So we'll do another test and it should work. Now I want to point this out because when I was first building the app, um, I did not have you know, the double brackets for the option set field, it was actually just one brackets for from the beginning to the end, including the option set field, and it wouldn't work, it would actually give me a red squiggly line saying that this is not going to work. For some reason, it actually worked over here. But I wanted to show you that if in case you ran into that same problems, um, for that option set field, you keep it in its own curly brackets over there um, in the patch function. So uh, I'll do the test number three, testing again, um, for test number three. Now I'll go ahead and submit it. And that's the one test number three also worked and see this time the in progress came in over here. Well, when we did not have that, um, the, you know, the, uh, um, the actual value, it wouldn't work. Now I want to show you another way to find that value. Um, there is another long way to find it. And I'll show it to you. The easiest way is obviously just come over here, find it and you're good to go, you know, click on any one of them. In fact, when I go and click over here, click on view more, it'll show you the value for pending. If I click over here, click view more, it shows you the value for that one. So it kind of gives you all of it. And that's how I was able to take screenshots and add it to the blog itself. But there's another longer way to find it. And I want to show you how that works. So you see this top right settings or the gear, I click over there and I go into advanced customizations. And in the advanced customizations, you can pretty much go to any one of these. Uh, but I'm going to start actually with just going to users, I click on users. And now it's taking me to the Dynamics 365 side of it. 
So we'll just wait for that to open up. It's loading and everything is successful. Once it loads, you can come back over here and you can go to advanced settings. And once I come over here on the top, that's it's taking me to the settings. When I click on that, this is what shows up over here. And then I can pretty much just click on any one of these and I'll just click on the administration side. Or in this case, I should actually clicked on, um, I'll click on the solutions one over here. And the solutions one, I can click on any one of these over here. Again, th it's not the whole point of getting there, but I want to show you the other way. No matter how you get there, this is where you want to be, that you should be able to see your own entities. And in my own entities, I see that new one which I created, which was the tickets one. When I expand that, I can see the fields. And in the fields, let me go and make this a little bit bigger. Um, in the fields, you can actually see the um, the status one. And now when I double click on it, it opens up this another pop-up window. In the pop-up window, you've got to click on this edit section over here, because that's the option set. When I click on the edit set, opens up another section, another window, bring that down over here. Now when I click on the in progress one, that's another way you can go ahead and get that value over here. Now, this is a long, tedious way to do it. Uh, I've actually been told that in the past, this was the only way to do it, uh, but now it's a little bit easier. You can basically go back straight to the Power Apps over here in the Power Apps, go to your entities, click on status. Again, you click on the option set over here, and then make sure you click on those three dots of the ellipsis, and then click on view more, and you get that value, the number over there. So that was how you get the data. Um, there's two ways to do it. There is the long, tedious way that I showed you. You don't have to use that anymore. You can actually use this easier way. But the same thing has to be done on the flow side too. So on the flow side, I'll, the example that I have is, and I'll open up the, um, because you can actually see that the emails are also coming through. Um, on the flow side, um, when I was ending a ticket, um, I wanted to first confirm if the ticket value was actually closed. Uh, and if it is closed, then I want an email notification to go out. Um, so let me open up my Outlook so we can see that's going to happen. And let's also take a look at the flow. The flow is really simple. Um, in the flow, I'm just making sure is an, uh, when a, a record is updated. And then in the record is updated, I'm checking to see the, CD, the, the uh, CDS entity status. Now in this CDS entity status, I initially tried by saying that is the value equal to completed. And that didn't work. Um, but I because I had to go and get in the um, the actual value. And so just to go back, we can take a look at it, go back over here, go to status. And the um, option I'm looking at is completed. In this case, I click on the ellipsis over here, click on view more, and I got the numerical value, which is 520, uh, 572.090 ending with 003. Got that number, go into the flow, again, ending with 03, 003. And then then email notification goes out and the email is pretty much straightforward as well. So now when we go and test it, say I go to this one over here, I say edit. Uh, I'll go ahead and complete that submit. The ticket is marked completed. Flow is running over there on the flow side. We'll go ahead and see. Um, has it picked up the condition and the condition even though it is completed it needs to actually pick up the condition of um, uh, which is the the id number or in this case it was the value number of the uh, uh, the entity column so i'm just going to refresh it we'll just make sure that it has in fact run i already got an email there you go it did run you can see it ran over here six seconds ago which is run successfully it went ahead and put in um, it, it matched it to say that, yep, this one is a closed one. And I should have also gotten an email. And that's the email. It says, yep, uh, your ticket has been closed. And then it just gives me all the ticket information again. So again, the two, the key, key thing I want to say is that this was um, for the um, option set field. In the option set fields, the options that you're adding, those new um, text values cannot be used for the Power Apps patch, or it cannot be used for the flow condition. You need to actually get the values, the numerical values of that option set, 
And in order to do that, you can go back to your entities for each of the option sets over there. Um, each of the option sets, click on the ellipses over here, click on the view more. That's how you get the values. That's the easiest way to do it. There's also a long, tedious process of going into Dynamics 365 and going into the settings and getting all of those. If you really want to do it, that's the other way to do it. But this is the fastest way. And uh, that's how you make it work. So I learned this. I thought I want to share this to you guys. And, uh, you know, keep power apping. Thanks.